Middlesex weather Abbas onslaught to shade day one. Leicestershire were looking to bounce back after an innings defeat last time out, a disappointment following their impressive performance against Sussex in the opening round. Meanwhile, Middlesex have begun their campaign with a draw and a defeat. After an uncontested toss, Leicestershire elected to bowl first. If that was a surprise with the sun shining, the decision was very quickly vindicated. Mohamed Abbas trapped Sam Robson LBW off the very first ball of the match. And the pace man's first ball in the championship this season, a real blow for the home side, who were without injured captain Dawid Milan and also Owen Morgan and Paul Sterling away on international duty. Abbas continued with an excellent opening spell, but Nick Gubbins and Max Holden survived that and started to move the scoreboard. The partnership was eventually dominated by Gubbins, who hit 10 fours to reach his half century just before lunch. 95 for one at the break meant the stand had reached exactly that, an excellent recovery for Middlesex after that shocking start. The century stand duly came up soon after the interval, but Abbas's return to the attack brought a second breakthrough for Leicestershire, Holden caught behind for 41. That dismissal brought Tom Lace to the crease, just recalled from his loan spell at Derbyshire, but he soon lost his partner, Abbas involved again, taking the catch as Gubbins fell to Ackerman for 75. Eskenazi joined Lace and the captain took the lead in a partnership of 42, hitting six boundaries before a rather tame dismissal, caught behind off Ackerman and Middlesex were 177 for four. Lace took charge, well supported by John Simpson, and after scoring three half centuries for Derbyshire already this season, he brought up his first for Middlesex with his eighth boundary. The pair had added exactly 50 at tee, Middlesex 227 for four, and in a decent position after being put in to bat. The interval came at just the right time for Leicestershire, and the host had added just one run when Lace fell to Ben Mike for 51, Lewis Hill's third catch of the innings. And in Mike's next over, Simpson departed to LBW for 18. George Scott and James Harris mounted the third half-century stand of the innings, with four boundaries apiece. The return of Abbas did for Harris, LBW for 24. And three balls later, Rayner departed in the same fashion for a duck. But when Abbas wasn't bowling, Middlesex could prosper. Scott posted the third 50 of the innings with five fours and a six. He was still there at the close along with Helm, the home side 325 for eight and well placed against a Leicestershire attack that needs better support for Mohamed Abbas. Rayner reigns in Leicestershire to put Middlesex in charge. It was a solid display by Middlesex on the opening day with the Leicestershire attack too reliant on Mohamed Abbas. Gubbins and Lace the pick of the batsman and George Scott still there at the close after completing his maiden first class half century. Middlesex resumed on 325 for eight. But on the second morning it was Scott's partner Tom Helm who assumed the leading role. The pair added 21 more runs for the ninth wicket and Scott's share was only three before he became Wright's first victim of the innings for 55. And Wright was involved in the final wicket soon after, running out Bamber as Middlesex closed on 349. Helm 37 not out, backing up some solid work by the middle order, Abbas finishing with four for 72. Helm and Bamber were straight back into the action with the ball and immediately hit their stride. The Leicestershire openers found runs hard to come by and the pressure eventually told. Atik Javid LBW to Helm for just a single after he left one that came back up the famous Lord's Slope. But skipper Paul Horton and Hassan Azad broke the shackles and compiled a 50 stand in 12 overs. It looked like being Leicester's morning, but then Harris bowled Azad off the last ball before the interval. Leicestershire 62 for two at lunch, a decent start after finishing the Middlesex tail for just 24 more runs. The home side with some hard work ahead on a batter friendly track. Their efforts weren't immediately rewarded as Horton continued to make decent progress. But when the score had reached 80, the captain fell, caught by Rayner off Bamba. Eight fours in his 43, but it wasn't the big score Leicestershire needed. Cosgrove looked like he might provide that, but once he'd reached 28 off 45 balls with six fours, he was pinned in front by Rayner and Middlesex were well on top. 
Ackerman was the next batsman to offer some resistance, and slowly but surely a useful stand developed with Dearden. They matched each other for boundaries and added a precious 78 for the fifth wicket before T. At 189 for 4, Leicestershire still trail by 160. The stand continued to grow when play resumed and had reached 110 when Ollie Rayner ended it, Dearden dismissed for 61. And when the same bowler had Ackerman caught behind for 63, Leicestershire still trailed by more than 100 with just four wickets left, which soon became just two remaining, Hill LBW to Harris, before Rayner's purple spell continued when he caught Taylor off his own bowling. Rayner's four wickets so far had taken him past 300 in first-class cricket. One more wicket fell before Stumps, Helm taking his second of the day to remove Mike, before Leicestershire closed on 257 for 9, still 92 runs behind. Middlesex will expect a speedy finish in the morning, followed by the chance to build a big advantage on day 3. Leicestershire's bowlers set up a potential thriller at Lord's. Middlesex finished day two on top at Lords, despite a century partnership between Ackerman and Dearden, which helped Leicestershire reach 257 for nine, still 92 runs behind, Ollie Rayner taking four for 58 for the hosts. Middlesex's first mission on day three was to take the final wicket quickly, and Helm obliged Wright, his third victim of the innings. The visitors all out for 268, a deficit of 81. Middlesex had added just nine runs to their lead when they lost their first second innings wicket, Taylor having Holden caught by Ackerman for five. After his golden duck in the first inning, Sam Robson seemed determined to make amends with three early boundaries, but he fell to Taylor too, caught behind to make it 32 for two. Nick Gubbins continued his impressive form of the first innings, but Tom Blaise couldn't match his first day 50, caught by Horton off right for just four. Eskenazi joined Gubbins, and at lunch Middlesex had reached a not entirely convincing 73 for three, but the lead of 154 was already looking useful. That advantage hadn't grown much bigger when Gubbins became Wright's second scalp of the innings, caught behind for 36. And that wicket sparked a collapse which jeopardised Middlesex's control of the match. The next over, Eskenazi was removed by Mohamed Abbas, thanks to a brilliant catch by Ackerman at second slip. And just three runs later, Scott, so impressive in the first innings, was gone. Bowled by Wright. At 94 for six, the home side's lead was just 175. Simpson and Harris edged the Middlesex total past three figures, with each run precious in the context of the match. But Leicestershire's bowlers weren't to be denied for long, and the overall lead was 195 when Harris became Taylor's third wicket, caught behind by Hill for 12. One run later, the home side were eight down, Ackerman getting in on the act, Rayner caught by Azad for one. Having scored useful runs at number 10 in the first innings, Helm did it again in partnership with Simpson, a crucial 50 stand up to T to make Middlesex's lead much more comfortable. At 166 for eight, they were 247 ahead. Leicestershire needed to wrap the innings up quickly. They couldn't do so because Helm and Simpson continued to match each other for boundaries as they added 85 for the ninth wicket to take the game a little further away from the visitors. Helm was LBW to Mike for an impressive 46. But Simpson eked out another 24 valuable runs with Bamba before the number 11 was dismissed in the same manner for eight. Simpson 59 not out. Leicestershire's victory target was 305, but first they had to negotiate 13 tricky overs before the close. Atik Javid dropped anchor while Paul Horton played his shots, and the pair survived, reaching 38 without loss at stumps. Middlesex are still slight favourites, but we could be in for an absorbing final day at Lords. Rain frustrates Leicestershire as Middlesex escape with a draw. An impressive fight back by the Leicestershire bowlers set up a fourth day run chase at Lords. They dismissed Middlesex for 223 in their second innings to leave themselves requiring 305 for victory. Atik Javid and Paul Horton made a good start, reaching 38 without loss at the close. 
They'd added only three more runs to that overnight total when there was a short delay for bad light on a gloomy morning at the home of cricket. And when play resumed, Atik Javid's watchful knock soon came to an end. LBW to Harris for 12, scored off 50 balls with 1-4. That was 51 for 1 and his overnight partner didn't survive much longer either. Captain Horton LBW to Bamber for 36 and Middlesex had the momentum as they chased victory. But Leicestershire regrouped and Hassan Azad played a couple of nice shots before lunch as he and Cosgrove settled in. Azad did ride his luck though, especially when Robson put him down at slip off Harris. They reached 97 for two at lunch, still 208 runs required, with Middlesex needing eight wickets in two sessions. They didn't take long to claim the first of those when play resumed, Cosgrove missing a delivery from Rayner to fall LBW for 22. That brought Colin Ackerman to the wicket, and the South African signalled his intent with a couple of fours off Helm. It was clear Leicestershire weren't planning to just bat out time. Both teams' attempts to win the game might be thwarted by the weather, and with the light failing there was a halt to play midway through the afternoon. When they returned, Ackerman wasted little time hitting Harris for a couple of boundaries. But then another stoppage, this time for Rain, to stall the momentum of both teams. It seemed to affect Leicestershire most because when they returned, Assad soon fell, LBW to Harris for 33, and with 151 still required, the visitors were four down. Ackerman and Dearden had delivered a century partnership in the first innings, and they soon looked settled again. Dearden hit Rayner for a six, and Leicestershire were well on course. In tough batting conditions, the pair reached T with the score 182 for four, 123 required from a minimum of 33 overs. But Leicestershire's task got harder thanks to more rain, which began during tea and forced a half-hour delay. When they returned, the run chase was reduced to 26 overs. But as long as Ackerman was there, that didn't seem a problem. A four off Helm, followed by a single, took him to his half-century. Dearden hit a boundary to take the target below 100, but next ball he was comprehensively bowled by Helm. 99 needed, five wickets for Middlesex and a grandstand finish in prospect. Ackerman kept his side on track with back-to-back -back fours off Rayner, but just after five o'clock the rain came again to further frustrate Leicestershire. They never made it back on the field with play called off just before six o'clock. Both sides denied the chance of victory, but with just 79 more runs needed, Leicestershire will feel most aggrieved. They had to settle for 10 points while Middlesex take 11.